That's great. And like uh, you have been in the data science field since a long time. So people really get confused. Like my, I also get confused when I look for jobs on LinkedIn. Like what actually is data science according to you? What do you think it is? I'm, I'm not even trying to answer that. <laughs> <laughs> like, like, I don't, I'm not sure if I have any like pithy, smart answer that's better than what Wikipedia yeah. can give you. Yeah. I also think that the reason I'm not trying to define it is because data science definitely means different things to different people. And what one company calls data science, another would call a data analyst job, yeah. one would call machine learning, one would call data engineering. At a small company, being a data scientist actually does mean doing some data engineering and other types of work. At a big company, maybe there is a very specific meaning. That's why I kind of just don't even like fall too much into uh, like what do we label it as and like how do we separate it out. I just go job posting my job posting and just try to see, hmm. Yeah. Do my skills match up with what they're looking for? Great. You know, and then after that, I don't care what they're calling it, right? Or not only do, do my skills match up, do I want to do this kind of work? Because okay. that's another thing. You might yeah. see a bait and switch. Oh, let's call this job data science, but then make the whole thing about making dashboards. Yeah. Well, that's not really data science. Forget what it's called. They might still call it that just to get people in the door but that might be called bi or that might be just called like a visualization or that might be just be called like analytics right that's not real yeah. data science. Like all day you're just only in tableau so yeah that's why i like just don't even worry about it and try to go job posting to job posting and see if i'm a good fit got it got it. and like uh would you have some tips for like getting a data science internship because i the thing you said right now going out uh on LinkedIn and searching for jobs and then seeing if my skills match or not and then applying. <clears throat> so what do you have, uh, like, is there a specific tip for getting a data science internship? Like yes, some I skills or tips. projects? I have a few tips that are in this book. Yeah. That's I, basically I what the whole first uh, four <laughs> chapters are about the book, which is about how do you build resumes to stand out? So how, how do you build do you resumes? Build projects. How do you build portfolio projects to stand out, right? Like that's my biggest thing. Yeah. My biggest advice is you want to really stand out and make an impact on the job hunt besides just going to your university, doing your classes. It's build really, really good projects. And I detail a little bit more about that in chapter two of Ace of Data yeah. Science interview, but yeah. let me give you some tips right now. I think the biggest thing is you got to make your project complete, right? That's the first thing. Like, I don't want to see a half-assed project. I don't want to see a project that's local. Yeah. I want it published on GitHub. Even better, I want it deployed, right? If you're doing machine learning work, I want a deployed model that I can go test out, that I can poke around, that I can see the code for. So that's one big way to set yourself apart from others when it comes to building a project to be noticed on the job hunt. The other thing is to have really good visuals because let's face it, we're humans, right? Visuals yeah. we understand way better than, you know, I'm not, if I'm a recruiter, I'm looking at your work. I only have 10 seconds. I'm not going to yeah. read line 476 of your GitHub repo and be like, whoa, that's that's some really good data cleaning. No, yeah. I want to see that cool infographic, that cool GIF. I want to see you make a self-driving car. I want to see that public to blow dashboard that you can make. I want to see a cool like transfer learning project you made where I can upload a picture of me and then you transfer, you make my photo look like it was painted by Michelangelo, you know, something, yeah. some kind of transfer learning project, but I need to actually be able to upload an image and then you do the transform on it and you spit it out, right? Like that makes so much more of an impact than some random GitHub code that's really messy that I can't even see. Got it, got it. I like you also talk about in your book about cold emailing. So like, yes. how does cold email actually work? Because I have been doing that, but like getting no responses like on to recruiters, to hiring managers. So what do you think I would be, like I might be going wrong in here? Yeah, I would have to see your specific old emails and like what templates you use. But for sure, in just talking in generalities, I think that you have to be a certain level of like respond worthy to make this work, right? So cold emailing, where we're emailing a total stranger. Yeah. You have to have some project, some meat behind your ask, right? Like you can't cold email Google with some random project because they're like, we're Google, that's not relevant, right? Yeah. Secondly, at a smaller company, right? Like it, it works a little bit better because you know you're getting to the right person and you know that, hey, I'm talking to this 30 person startup that works with agricultural data and they're increasing crop yields using satellite imagery, great. 
I know that talking to them and showing them my satellite imagery analysis project or showing them my geospatial data analytics project wouldn't go a long way. Does yeah. that make sense? Yeah. So that's another thing that I see as a common mistake. People just think it should work no matter what kind of company, but you kind of have to line up your project with the company and have like a really convincing pitch for it to work out. Um, not, you know, spray and pray in generalities. Yeah.